You can now add 3D models into your Excel spreadsheets. 3D models are similar to adding clip art or illustrations, except that you have the ability to have three-dimensional angles and views of the artwork. In Excel, on the Insert tab on the ribbon, in the Illustrations group, you'll see 3D models. You can insert 3D models from a file. If you've got existing files that are three-dimensional, you can insert those. Otherwise, you can choose from online sources. The online sources accesses a Microsoft library that contains a whole host of 3D models, some of which are animated and some of which are not. We're going to first take a look at some of the ones that are not animated. So we're going to go down to Dinosaurs. And you'll notice there's a group of different dinosaurs in here. Again, some of these do happen to be animated. This little icon in the lower left corner of a person running is your animated icon. I'm just going to click on one of these. And we're going to choose Insert. When we get the 3D model inserted into our Excel spreadsheet, we can use the toolbar that will appear, a contextual toolbar called 3D Model, will appear on your ribbon. These are all tools that are related only to your 3D model. These are the same 3D models and 3D library that we have access to in PowerPoint and Word and Outlook. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. This icon that you see in the middle is your indicator that it is a three-dimensional image versus a regular flat file. If you click and hover over that icon, this is what allows you to change the view and the angle that you're viewing the image at. You can use 3D models in some of the same ways that you might use illustrations or clip art or icons or photographs, except you've got a lot more flexibility because you can customize how you're viewing things and you can also hone in on a certain part of that particular model and a certain angle. So if we wanted to look only at the top, we can just twist that around. Now at any point we can reset our 3D model we can reset both the model, which is just going to be the view, or the model and the size, which brings it back to the original size that it was imported. So let's just choose model, and it brings it back to its original view. Now there are preset views, so you can see along the side here, there's a quite a few different preset views, so if you don't want to use your hand at trying to get the right angle, you can experiment with some of these different views to see those models at different angles and tilts. Once you have a 3D model on your Excel spreadsheet, you can drag it just like you would an image. So when you click on it, you've got the handles that are all around the outside. That's what allows you to resize it. And if you hover over the lines, you'll see the four intersecting arrows. That's what's going to allow you to move it. It sits like an object does on top of your Excel file, or Excel spreadsheet, and you can move it around. And if you've got other items, you can also layer it. In that same 3D model ribbon, you have the opportunity to bring forward or send backward if you've got other objects. So for example, if we've got a shape, let's say that we want to have it sitting on a background shape, if I draw that right on top of my 3D model, it's going to automatically be the top layer. I'm just going to move it down so we can see a little bit of both. Now if I click on my 3D model, I can now send it backward. Or I can bring it forward. Sometimes we can use a shape like that to act like a background or a canvas to set our 3D models on. It allows it to stick out a little bit, 
keep in mind that when you're working with 3D models, your shape is going to be different based on the angle and the view and the tilt that you're working with. You can also use your rotate, but when you're working with your 3D models, a lot of times you won't use that rotate button because you'll be using the 3D rotate and tilt and view button instead. make this a little bit larger and we're going to experiment and look at one of the other features that's part of 3D models which is pan and zoom. So pan and zoom allows you to zoom in on a particular part of that 3D model so when you click on pan and zoom this is unique to 3D models in Microsoft. You'll see these same features, however, in PowerPoint and Word and in Outlook. But when you hit pan and zoom along the right hand side of your 3D model, you're going to have a magnifying glass with a plus in it. And when you click and drag up, it's going to zoom in. And when you click and drag down, it's going to zoom out. So let's say we've got a little smaller model here. We'll leave that as our backdrop. And with this smaller model, we've got, we're going to just resize it to approximately the size of our backdrop here. With the smaller model, when we go to the pan and zoom, what it allows us to do is zoom in on a particular part. It's similar to cropping, however the whole image is still there, so at any point we can pan and zoom in or pan and zoom out, but with 3D models what you're able to do is again not only find the particular angle and tilt and view, but you can hone in using pan and zoom to highlight and accentuate and maybe speak to a particular part of that 3D model. So now if I wanted to zoom in on one of those parts of the back, I don't know what those are called, or let's say we wanted to zoom in on the head or the face or the eye, depends on the model and how much detail you've got but now you can do something that looks like that. So again, the 3D models are going to give you a lot more flexibility because you can angle things and look from all different tilts and all different uh, viewpoints and perspectives. And then in addition to that, you can zoom in and see things at a very high level of detail. You can also use the height and width if you manually want to resize the, um, the 3D model. Let's now take a look at a 3D model that has some animation. So we're going to delete this. So again, like your photos, images, things like that, you can go ahead and select it and hit delete. Let's take a look at the animated 3D models under Insert 3D Models. I'm going to choose All Animated Models. Again, you'll notice the icon in the lower left-hand corner. And since we're doing dinosaurs, we're going to go ahead and pick this Dinosaur Animated. Once this comes in, you're going to notice the tab on your ribbon is going to have a couple of extra buttons, a couple of extra tools. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. You'll notice once it comes in, it's going to have animation. It's going to be moving as it comes in. And you'll also notice that in the lower left hand corner, there's a pause button. That pause will pause the animation. And you'll also notice in the upper left hand corner, you have play and scenes. Again, this is on the 3D model tab on the ribbon. So play is the same as the play button here. That just allows you to view what that animation looks like. 
and the other one is scenes. So you can choose no scenes, which is just the same as a 3D still figure, as a 3D model. No animation involved, so you can view it that way. Or they all have a different amount of scenes, so you can pick through any, in this case, of the five scenes. So if I want to see what scene four looks like, I can still use my 3D rotation icon. So even though there's a scene, I can still use that rotation icon to change the view or the tilt or the perspective. Again, I can click these different scenes and play them and see what each of them do. So again, there are going to be different animations associated with that 3D model based on those scenes. Now when you have a scene, the other thing that you can do is if you're playing, like let's go back to scene two. So if you want a particular point in the scene to be used, like let's say we'd like to have one of them going like that, with his mouth open, we can then go ahead and rotate that particular point of the scene. We still have the option to pan and zoom. So if we have found a point in that scene that we'd like to use, we can then pan and zoom that particular point. And maybe we want the mouth. And again, if we want it to have it a little different perspective, and then zoom again. we could have it look something like that. So that's a way that we could take a 3D model that's animated, pause it at a particular point in a scene, then use pan and zoom to really hone in on that particular part of, in this case, the dinosaur in that particular stage of the scene. So I'd encourage you to think about using these 3D models, both the animated and the non-animated ones as additions to your other pictures, photos, illustrations, clip art, all of those things. They are another way that you can use those. You don't have to use animation. You don't have to rotate them while you're doing a presentation. Some people are thinking, I don't need 3D models because I'm not going to be doing live presentations or I'm not going to be uh, working with these live. I don't have a need to do the rotation. But the real benefit, in my opinion, is taking these 3D models and getting exactly the particular angle and, and perspective and picture that you want with a lot more flexibility.